Today we are going to be talking about the historical development of the periodic table as well as its current organization system. For our essential question today, we're going to take the TEEK. Students will be able to describe how Dmitry Mendeleev and Henry Mosley developed our modern understanding of the periodic table and explain its current organization system. Feel free to pause or rewind to get that essential question and make sure you're turning that teak into a question form that can be answered by these set of notes. First, we're going to talk about Dmitry Mendeleev. He's who we consider to be the father of the modern periodic table. His periodic table was published in 1869, and he was the first to organize all of the elements that they had in such a way that it could predict missing elements. And he did this by organizing his table by two main properties. The first of which was by mass. His table in rows, that's left to right, was organized by increasing mass. Remember that our atomic mass is going to be our number of protons plus our number of neutrons. And in columns by chemical properties. We now call those chemical properties our chemical families, but our chemical properties in vertical columns and our mass in horizontal rows. With these two things, he was able to predict elements that did not exist yet based off of holes in his table. His table did have some shortcomings, however, he did not have noble gases on his table because they were not reactive and they had not been discovered in 1869. Henry Mosley came along after Dmitry Mendeleev and his table is closer to the modern periodic table. His table was published in 1913 and his was also organized by two properties. His two properties were different than that of Mendeleev, though. His rows, instead of being organized by mass, were organized by atomic number, which is just going to be my number of protons. His columns were the same, though, in that they were organized by chemical properties. Now we refer to them as families. So that's how they came to our periodic table and how they helped us. And we're gonna talk about specifically what our periodic table looks like now. And that is going to be first with groups. So our groups, as you can see, I've written it up and down on the vertical. And that is because groups are my vertical things. They run up and down on the periodic table. They are my columns. We have lots of different names for the columns on the periodic table, columns, families, groups, okay? And for my columns, AKA for my groups, all of the elements inside of them have very similar chemical characteristics and bonding, bonding patterns. The reason they have this is because they have the same number of valence electrons which is essential for bonding. It's the only thing that allows us to actually form bonds are our valence electrons. So we've talked about that vertical organization, our groups, and now we're going to talk about that horizontal orient, uh, organization in our rows. Our rows run, run left to right, and elements within the same row have increasing atomic numbers and are in the same energy level, meaning they have similar amounts of energy for their latest electrons, but it's easy to figure out which is going to come next on our rows because we're just increasing the proton count by one. The very last thing that we're gonna talk about is going to be those valence electrons that I mentioned before in our group. 
section. And that is going to uh, be shorthanded as capital V, capital E for valence electrons. My valence electrons are my outermost electrons. They are the ones on the most outermost shell, okay? They're the only ones that are used in bonding. And we can actually figure out how many valence electrons are in each group based off of the Roman numeral on the top of that group. So as an example here, we don't have Roman numerals on this chart, but they form the same pattern if we use the numbers with the A next to them, okay? So everybody in this group will have three valence electrons, four valence electrons, five valence electrons, six valence electrons. The columns that have B next to their number do not follow this pattern. This will be special and we'll talk about that at a later date, but the columns that have an A next to their number, that is going to be their number of valence electrons.